Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is curves? Curves are basically a data container that holds values, and it's meant to give you a range of values in a curve-like fashion, so you can get back data on a specific point. Let me show you an example. Let's pull up a float curve. So here's a float curve, and this is a float curve. Basically, we have a data point here, a data point here, and a data point here. We have some handles we can play with that allow us to adjust the tangents in and out, and then we have data points all along our curve. So for example, if I wanted to know what was at point 0.5, I'd end up with a value of 0.5 on this one. If I wanted to know what was at 0.75, well, I'm going to get something 0.16. And that's based on the value points I've put on my curve. So let's look at how we would create a curve. Curves are basically, like I said, a data container, and it is a unique object inside of Unreal Engine. So we would go up to somewhere in here. I think it's miscellaneous. There we go. Miscellaneous and curve. And it's going to ask you to create one of the three curve types. Now, technically, there are for four curve types that I'm aware of. There may even be animation curves. I haven't quite got into that yet. But there are three primary curves you're going to deal with and a fourth semi-hidden one that has to be inside of a timeline, so it's timeline specific. So we're going to deal with these three types. We have float, linear color, and vector. Now all you have to do is simply choose one you want, select it, and then name it to whatever you want, and you'll have a new blank curve. So as you can see here, we have a blank curve. To add points to the curve, you can simply double click, which will not work, or you can right click and choose to add a new key. Now every single curve has a different way to add new keys, and we'll cover that when we go over each curve. But for the most part, you're just simply going to right click basically where you want it, or if there's an existing curve line, for example, you would right click to add it to that point, and then add a new key. And it's going to add a value there. Now you can drag values, these little keys around, and you can right click and you can adjust the values. Or when you have one selected, up here in the top left you have both the time and the individual key value. So let's say I wanted to create a curve that simply was basically going from 0 to 1 over 2 seconds. I can take this first one and do time of 0 because it's going to start at 0 seconds and my value is going to be 0 and it's going to move it to the bottom left. Now I can right click anywhere and add a new key. Now I can try to drag this. So let's see, we said one second, a value of one. So somewhere around here, hopefully. And you notice how maybe zoom in, make it help. Well, again, we can do that or we can just time of one, value of one in the top left. And now we have an exact value. So keep that in mind. Now we have a few things to help us out. We have the ability to fit horizontally, which basically it's going to, let's say we were over here and we hit fit horizontal. It's going to put the first keyframe and the last keyframe inside of our horizontal width. Fit vertical, fit vertical does the same thing, except as you can see, it fits vertically. So if you just basically hit these two, it's going to focus on your key points. We have the zoom to fit, which is basically these two things except combined. And then we have our, basically these are going to be our curve and tangent types. By default, these are, these are going to be linear. It's going to go from one point to the other point in a straight line. So let's go ahead and add another key point here, and we'll move it to here. And as you can see, we basically go point A to point B in the straightest line possible. These are pretty much your same basic curve points if, if you've ever used a curve editor. The difference being they are at a fixed distance from the key point. And let me show you that. If we right click and change this from linear to something where we can control it, auto, user, break, let's go with auto for example, we're going to get two handles, a left and a right handle. But unlike other programs, that left and right handle is fixed at this distance from here to here. Now each handle does work independently, but how they work is based on what you're using. User basically, as you can see here, gives us this nice little curve based on where we created it. Like we went to here and we did user, or we did auto, for example. I changed this one back to auto. 
we're going to end up getting this automatic curve here. If we break it, it splits the handles in two. So we now have this handle acting independently of this handle. Now the key here is because this junction here to here is linear, this handle basically has no effect. If we were to change this to something like auto, now this handle has an effect. We're no longer at linear. So now you can see both of these handles have an effect on how the curve works. Now, if you notice, each of these points has their own individual settings. So like, for example, I broke this one. Let's say I wanted this to be something more like this, where we had a nice weight and then a big sweep, then a sharp rise. And then this one, we wanted to kind of have a little bit of a lift and then something like this. Each point is different and has their own tangent setting. And then linear interpolation basically allows us to kind of give us something like this. And then we have things like constant, which will basically gives us, well, as you can see here, a constant evaluation from one point to the next. It's going to go straight, and then it's going to go right up, then it's going to go straight, then it's going to go right up. So basically, it's not going to change its value from the current value to the new value until it gets to that length in time. So you get this funky square looking thing. Now, here is something to note. If you have multiple nodes selected, like I do in this case, you cannot adjust the time but you can adjust the values. So that's something to keep in mind. Now you can, for example, select all three of them and we can change it back to auto and we'll get the auto on what we wanted before. And we'll go back to that and there we go. We have snapping options. Snapping options basically determines where it snaps on our grid. Point one, you know, we have our different bigger snaps, lower snaps. We have input snaps and output snaps where things snap to each other. And these are just for fine tuning and adjustment. And then we have basically what happens to our curves after and before the start and the end. Basically, will this continue on like this or is it going to go ahead and loop and cycle? For the most part, you're going to use a curve with a predefined set of values and these things are more for fine tuning. Now using a curve, what would we use a curve for? Well, like I said, it's basically a, a data type. It's, it's a, it holds data. It holds these points here as keys, but it also holds every bit of data along the type. So when we want to ask for something specific, we're going to get it. And it's useful when you want to get data along a predefined point. Let's say you have this as an experience bar. And you wanted it something like this, where you had a nice smooth curve in the beginning, and then it ramped up more towards the player's maximum level. You could use it as something like this. You could define it as this is their entire experience level curve, and every you know 10% or whatever you determined in terms of the time was the player's level, and you could pull data from here using the Gitter nodes. And the Gitter nodes are covered in a separate video, but I'll explain how to do that then. Alternately, you could use it for driving something. A traditional usage would be like in a timeline. If I pull up a timeline here, and we were to go ahead and look at our timeline, inside of a timeline, we have a curve. And in this case, you can see I'm driving a value going from low to high to low to animate something like maybe a color change or movement. It's great for, great for animating lerps. Going back to the curves, we have, again, two more types. You have your float curve, which we covered. Then we have a linear color and a vector curve. Let's go and look at the linear color next. And well, it's going to look quite extreme if you look at it from the graph point of view. But the linear color has this nice little handy feature at the bottom. So let me go ahead and start a new linear color curve. So we'll go to miscellaneous. We'll go to curves. We'll choose a linear color and select it. And then we'll go ahead and just open this one up. And this is what you're going to see by default. But we also have, again, this nice color stopping area at the bottom. All we have to do is click anywhere inside of here on the top or the bottom, and it's going to add a new key point. The top key point is the color. The bottom key point is our alpha. And you can drag these and add new ones as needed. And you'll notice as we add them, we get values at the top. Let's say we wanted this to go from a red color to a green color over two seconds. Well, let me click on this one and delete it. And let me click on this one and delete it. And let me go ahead and also get rid of an alpha. Let's drag this down to zero. And well, we're going to run into a few problems. If 
let's move this over to C. We are technically not using one key point for the values. Keep in mind, a color, it consists of red, green, and blue. So right here, we have our red value, which is set to time of 0 0.09 and value of 1. So let's go to 0 on that one. But down here, we have our green and our blue. And you'll notice we can't adjust them. If I want to change their time, both of them to 0, you can't adjust them both at once. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but that's just the way it works. Now, the workaround for this one is you can lock down individual colors. So for example, if we lock all of these colors, we're not going to be able to adjust anything. But now I know I need to move my green and my blue to zero. I could unlock green, and you can see we can select our green. I'll move it to zero. And then we can lock the green and unlock the blue, select the blue, and move it to zero. And now you'll notice we have all of our values again back to zero on the time down here. The other alternative, as you may have noticed, is if you just right click, you can change the time on the color, remove the stopper, or choose the color. But that's an easy way of changing an individual value, is by locking or unlocking the appropriate curves. Now in this case, we're going to keep it a solid color. We're going to go for roughly two seconds, so let's add another curve value here. We'll move it to two seconds, and we'll go ahead and change its color to green. So zero, one, zero. I'll go ahead and hit OK, and there we go. Now we have a red to green curve. And the nice thing about this is if we were to basically say, hey, what is your color at one second in? It's going to go ahead and go one second in, and it's going to give us these values at one second. So we're going to get back this color. So it's a nice way to smoothly move between colors. And alphas work the same way. We can add an alpha key down here. I can right click and edit the time. So let's say at one second, we're going to go down to zero opacity. And you'll notice the whole thing changes to clear. Because we only have one key point in here, there's no starter and stopper. We're basically applying this to the entire thing. So we would have to have something like adding another one here. Whoops, that would be me closing down the gradient bar. Let's bring that back up. Oh, where is it at? Oh, that's a good question. You know, I've never killed the gradient bar before on accident. Hmm. There we go. Right click on the bottom, show gradient. Wow, that was annoying. So if we add two more stops, which is what I'm trying to do right now, we'll go ahead and move these back to a value of 0 with opacity of 1, opacity of 1 with a value of 2, and there we go. Now we have the color still fading and then our opacity going from the solid to the clear to the solid. And of course, we can get any of those values at any point. We could grab our alphas, grab just this value, and you can see I can adjust the alpha interactively as needed. I just consider these a giant pain in the rear because of the fact that you're technically working with four points on the graph and it can make things a little bit confusing. If you just work down here, it's really nice and easy. Our last vector, not last vector, our last curve is going to be the vector curve. And hopefully it's pretty simple if you understand what vectors are. It's going to give us back a three value output, an X, Y, and a Z. So it's basically the same thing as our linear color without the alpha. And unfortunately, we don't have the editor down here. But the same tips apply. You can right click, and this time you can add a key and value to all curves, or add a key to all curves, as you can see here. Or if you have an individual value selected, you can add an individual key to that line. So in this case, I want to maybe add a value to x. We'll keep x unlocked, and I can right click and add a key just to x. Or if I want to add just a Y, we can right click and add just a Y. If you add with one unlocked like this, it'll add to that value, that axis. If you have more than one, you have it right here. Add key to all curves and key to all value and curves. And as you can see here, I went ahead and added that. But like I mentioned before, you cannot edit the value on three different ones or two different ones, multiples. Now you may have noticed there, even though this says, well, we have to lock two of them. Even though this says all curves, it technically only means the unlocked curves. So like for example here, you'll notice I have a value on red, value on green, but no value on blue. That's because I had blue locked. Then in this case, if I add a value to all curves with green and blue unlocked, we can then unlock red and you'll notice well there's no red value there's one here but not here 
We didn't have red unlocked, therefore we're not going to get a red value when we add a key. So that's an easy way to adjust keys. Unlock what you want, move it to where you want, lock it, unlock the next one, move it to where you want, and you can just continue on like that as needed until you get the desired result. And so the vectors are useful if you need to move something from one place to another. And rather than having three different float curves, you can just use a vector curve and take the values as needed. Keep in mind, a curve by itself isn't really much use. You need to use the getters to get the values from them. Those are covered in separate videos. You can also get a certain value at a certain time, which is covered in another value. And just as a last thing, uh, curves are reusable, which makes them great inside of timelines. So if I was to, for example, open up my timeline, I have the ability to load up an external curve. So I can grab another curve and load that into here rather than defining the curve inside the timeline. That is going to wrap up the basic what are curves video. We've covered how to create them, the different types, and what they're used for. We're gonna, you can go ahead and look at the other videos if you want to understand how to get values from them and maybe use those values to drive something, such as changing color, the position, or opacity of an object.